the secret to film is that, is that it's an illusion. And it's an illusion that's created at 24 frames a second. You have the illusion of movement, you have the illusion of space and time. And ILM is concerned with creating that illusion. It's funny, the, the images that you see on the screen are nothing like what it is to actually do it. You know, they often can be so, oh wow, that looks really neat, but what it's involved is, you know, maybe 40, 50, 60 people working on that thing for weeks and weeks, and then you just think, oh boy, that's a neat explosion. But what it's taken to get that has been a lot of different talents from a lot of different people. On episode one, we basically had more freedom than George ever had on the original Star Wars film, and that's really due to digital technology. Up till now, everybody's been constrained by the compromises you have to make because you virtually couldn't build something so big or you couldn't have such an epic landscape to tell your story in. That was the fun part of writing this project is that I wasn't limited. Whatever my imagination could come up with, I just put down on the page and I said, we'll worry about this later. We went out to the ranch and saw 3,500 storyboards all pasted up on sheets of foam core. And George took us through all the boards one by one, kind of taking us through the story and giving us a general idea of what was required. And my reaction, just about every board was, well, that's going to be really hard. And before you even have time to, to think, he's on to the next one, that's another. Well, there's 2,000 characters in that shot. <laughs> How were and then we were on to the next one. And so it was a pretty overwhelming experience. We were just, just blown away. Um, the first few meetings were just trying to get a sense of what these might look like and how many characters might be needed or how many models and how, which direction we were going to go. It was just staggering, the, the concept. It became pretty clear up front, this is going to be unlike any other special effects movie ever done. To put it in perspective, a big film has maybe 250 uh, effect shots and a really monster film like Titanic will have 450, 500, but it was really clear that George was thinking about somewhere between 1,700 and 2,000 shots. And the thing that I, I, I was most afraid of was, can ILM do it? Could any effects house do that? From the get-go, we saw we were gonna have to, to um, branch out in all directions and use all of the arrows in ILM's equipment. I am betting heavily on the Sebulbar. So in a case like the pod race hangar, we shot a number of the full-size pod racer engines in a stage in Leaveston. As we were shooting, it was my job to try and make sure that we had all the pieces we needed to put the shot together later. There was a huge crew, lots of computers, lots of wires, and lots of guys hunched over these machines. And I thought, well, I know they have to do with the film, but I don't quite want to know what they're up to. We used whatever would work. We used uh, the oldest of the old techniques, miniatures and matte paintings. And we used the newest of the new. We wrote a lot of new software on the show to be able to do some of these shots. You know, these guys over here are building this wonderful model, five people building a model for three weeks that then goes to a pyrotechnic guy and there's a camera crew shooting it and they blow that thing up. Okay, roll camera. It was important to be able to mix and match without really being able to tell that this was computer graphics or that this was a model or that this was live action. To create CG characters, alien characters, who could interact seamlessly with live actors was the dream. The bulbazer is going to win, I think. <laughs> oh, no! In terms of Jar Jar's performance, it really all started with Ahmed Best. He would play the scene with the actors. So I blocked it out and I directed the actors and Ahmed the way I wanted the scene to be played. I hired Ahmed because he is very physical and he can act with his body. So you kind of come over here next to the Jedi. So we have Ahmed motion capture applied to the Jar Jar model, but we haven't done any of the ears or the hands or anything yet. Yeah. But uh, that's, that's what we get from yeah. Ahmed. And here's a slightly different walk we had him do. It's nice so. that his neck kind of sticks out more than a normal person would. Yeah. Ahmed's performance was really a reference. Um, typically what we did is we blocked in the work very quickly, very, very rough, no facial animation, no overlapping action. You can think of them as a three-dimensional object, like our own bodies that have bones in them. And what we're able to do is grab, say, a wrist and move it, and then pose the other hand and then pose the head, and you can have the character locked in space for one frame. And then they give me another more articulate version down the road that's got uh, you know, eye movement, lip movement, 
uh, hands. So it makes a little difference. So it makes a little difference. In this case, I've got uh, a shape here. If you watch his mouth, I can change the percentage of this shape, and I can dramatically change the look of his mouth. And you know, the interesting thing is in the reaction, it seems like his eyes go back, see? Yeah. Rather than forward. They go forward. I would think. Yeah, we have them pop back and then move <laughs> forward, but I don't think, you're, I don't think one can the, read. The, the initial thing has to be forward. The difficult thing is creating a performance from a wireframe model on a computer. A performance that is as rich and as human and as dignified as any other character that we have in the movie. You won this small toss out lander, but you won't win the race, so it makes a little difference. That digital character that doesn't exist has to hold his own with Liam Neeson. What's this? A local. This isn't a group of computer geeks. These are serious guys who understand performance, subtlety, behavior, pacing, um, all the elements of storytelling. The analogy really is a, a painting, an enormous painting. You look at any individual shot and it's amazing what George and ILM has jammed into each frame of this movie. You're actually bombarded with it the first viewing. There's one shot that I just love. It's a helicopter shot establishing Theed. It's way too short for me. I've seen it 25 times. I still can't see everything I want to see. The biggest challenge is producing the volume of effects and keeping the quality level up. It was like building Venice. To build a city, a, a classical Renaissance city of the future or the past, it was, it was fabulous. Any show that we do, typically there's a couple aspects of it that are something that haven't been done, hasn't been done before. And on this show, there were probably two dozen. So dealing with fabric simulation, oh. and, you know, how the cloth folds and how it reacts to the movement. Bomba degenerate. Extremely dense, complex scenes with hundreds or thousands of characters. Synthetic terrain generation. The pod race is an incredible accomplishment. Virtually everything, the sky, the terrain, the pod, the engines, and the digital characters, the CG alien characters that actually fly the machines, are completely created by a group of artists. Nothing like that has ever been attempted before. With the synthetic way that we're doing these, you know, we can really give the emotion to the scene that is appropriate for the film. You have to see the film two or three times. It's so dense. There's so many different things that are going on in each frame. There's an old cliche that says the, uh, you know, the best compliment you could ever get is that nobody knew there were effects in the picture. You know, I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, I also really like working on the really bold stuff, like racing through the desert at 600 miles an hour and things crashing and exploding. There's nothing like, you know, 4,000 Gungans fighting 4,000 droids. That's just really neat. A lot of people were very, very nervous in the beginning of this, but everybody has come through in the most amazing way. You know, he's been waiting for 20 years to fold everything ILM has learned back into episode one. And action. It's a beautiful thing to witness and watch.